Henshin Agogo, baby, what's good guys, Yoku here, and uh, today's video is something that I've wanted to do for a little bit now, and I still haven't properly figured out how I want to go about doing this on my own, but I do have enough points, or rather enough of a discussion, to have this conversation with you and I. Just a quick disclaimer, because I don't want this to come off as some type of like, I don't want you guys to like take this to Reddit and turn this into some war or whatever, because that, that's usually what happens. But I already have addressed some issues with Pride Win. I've already talked to Ant about the way that the tier list operates. And this is a little bit ago. The tier list is for MOC. And I will get into that later on in the video on like why I also think that's still kind of uh, misleading in a way. But right now, the biggest thing in this comment comes from Vexel50 is that a lot of you treat Pridewin as the Holy Grail. Y'all will treat this as the epitome of this is what it is. Now, recently, <laughs> recently, you guys have been treating Grimrose tier list or rather how he places characters and what he thinks of characters as the new Holy Grail. It's really weird because now there's some weird argument going on. And most of you on YouTube probably don't even know this, right? But over on Reddit and some other places, there's this whole discourse between what Grimm said versus what Pridewin said versus any other creator versus what CN said. And it's just a mess. And, and that's that's kind of where I'm going, right? There's no consensus. We don't have a single basis on what we're making these tier lists off of. So yeah, Pridewin doing MOC, that's fine. Most of us do make our tier lists off of MOC or based off of MOC, but there's a huge factor or determining factor, I should say, that makes basing your entire tier list off of MOC and then pushing it out into the ethos, a bad thing. And we're gonna talk about it. This whole time I had eye crust in my eyes and you guys just didn't tell me. All right, so anyhow, at the moment, we can go over to Pridewin and we can look at their tier list just real quick. And I wanna show you guys, yes, it's between single, blast target, and then AOE. And with that, you also have their tier list criteria, which you guys can read this, it's on their website. Just to give you a quick rundown on some of the things here, they're telling you which Eidolons are for which characters. Uh, and you can see that there's a new change that they have down here. I think this is a couple updates ago, but you know, E0, E0, E6, QQ, things like that. So those are really good. You also have some other determining factors which weren't necessarily here before, If correct me if I'm wrong, but flexibility, uh, the amount of investment required for the character. I don't remember reading any of this stuff the last time we made a tier list video and we referenced Pride One's tier list. So this is really good. A lot of this information is actually what I was gonna talk about, the flexibility of a character, how easy is it for them to perform in different uh, modes, not even just single blast or AOE. But what I mean by that is just different team positions. Are they stuck or glued to one particular thing? In this case, hyper carry. Can they only run hyper carry? Or is it possible for them to, to move around, right? Be flexible. Can they run sub DPS, main DPS? Can they be a support? Things like that have to come into play. Of course, you're gonna have damage output. This is always a thing that's gonna be talked about unless you're talking about supports. The amount of investment that a character requires, finally, they added this. And, and again, y'all are gonna hate me, but I'm gonna tell you some stuff and it's not gonna be pretty. The amount of investment required for the character to feel good when playing it. Can they do what they do without needing two or three different characters in order to help them get that function across? Reliance on specific teammates to perform well. This is 100% right now at this current moment of time. This is very much for a specific character. You guys already know who it is. I will address it, but this is for a specific character. However, this goes across the board for everybody. So now that I'm reading this and I'm, I'm seeing that a lot of these have different criteria now, Great job, Ant, absolutely. I love that you added this into Pride Wins tier list or even if Ant didn't do it, whoever did it. Whoever put this information in here for people to read, this is very important. The impact of debuffs and buffs on the team. All of this stuff is very critical information for us to be able to understand why a character can get placed the way that they do. All of that out of the way, now we can talk about. Okay, so the uh, wireless part of my mouse is now dead. So if anybody wants to help your boy out, that'd be cool. But regardless, now we can talk about the actual tier list, which will lead me into a few other things regarding their tier list. Now, MOC changes every couple of weeks, which means theoretically all of this stuff should change over the course of two weeks or so. Meaning that in Viber to Lune, if the enemy is not weak to imaginary, it should not be an S plus. Now, granted, it's Lune. He's going to blow something up regardless of whatever it is. And then, you know, obviously you're going to get your damage. So I think it's fair to keep him in S plus. I think Jing Liu sits up there in S plus as well, depending on what's going on. They just do too, way too much damage. Something new that I wasn't expecting was for them to keep Silver Wolf in S plus territory. I honestly thought they would move Pela 
up into the S plus territory due to the fact that a lot of people have been ride or dying for Palo right now. The main gist of what we're going to get across here. Ooh, I love that change. Amplifier and debuffer. Oof, I, I love this. I Yo, Ant, hit me up. How do I do this on my own? I want all of this stuff for my own tier list, but whatever. That's a whole different thing. Point being is that when you're looking at this stuff and you're looking at MOC and you're like, OK, how does this determine a character's value? Because someone who is new, I do this all the time. I did it with Brown Dust too. I just did it with uh, Reverse 1999. When I go look for a tier list and I look for these characters and I look at whatever is the most popular tier list or what's most available to me, I'm going to be looking for the criteria. Sometimes that criteria doesn't exist and I'll, I'll only see a picture. So if I'm looking at this as a new player or returning player or anything like that, I see that these two are the top of the top. They are at the top. They're here. Zila is no longer at the top. Does that mean Zila's bad? No, it just means that they have more than what she has or they have a, a more of an ability to do something that she might have the ability to do or they do it better. It, it doesn't really matter. QQ being up here, that's a whole different discussion. We'll talk about that afterwards. But <laughs> actually, no, we won't. Long story short, QQ is only here if you're lucky. If you're not lucky, she's not up here. It just it is what it is. There's no debating that. I know that you guys are going to debate that. I don't hate QQ. I, I have seen the light. Don't get me wrong. I have E6. She's not built yet, but I've seen the light. I'm just saying it's luck. If you if you do it the right way, it's it's good. And you QQ players are something else, bro. Y'all have some of the craziest luck, man. I, when I say that y'all be getting the, the 50-50s, y'all get 50-50s. And of course, you come down here to characters like Blade, Jing Yuin, Kafka, uh, Clara, which this, this is horrible. Uh, Yang Xing, Himiko being in C tier, especially with the current MOC. Absolutely not. So there's a lot of things that need to get readjusted based off of different metrics and what those metrics might be, you know, you, you never really know, right? It's up to whoever's creating the tier list. And again, some type of consensus on what's going on. Now, a big topic that's been going on around lately has been Topaz. Uh, Jing Liu's had her time. So I think it's pretty safe to assume we're all on the same page. She is cracked. I, I believe she is the best character in the game. Some people believe it's Imbibed Lune. Doesn't really matter. One of these two is the best character in the game. There's no need to argue about it. Now, Topaz and Zila sitting in the same tier. That might be a little crazy to a lot of you, but I do think that Topaz belongs in S tier. Now, hear me out. I don't think Topaz needs to be in this debuffer spot. And that's kind of the problem here is that she's in the debuffer spot and not in the damage dealer spot. There needs to be some form of like both. He doesn't amp you up like a harmony character, but the debuffing and damage dealing get to a point where it basically acts as a harmony character anyway. Point being is that she's both. Her damage is not so subpar that she's going to sit somewhere down here in B tier, right? I've seen Yang Xing. I've seen how much power he can output. And I'm very disappointed in my boy because he is one of my favorite characters. But yes, Yang Xing belongs somewhere down here. I wouldn't say B tier, maybe, but, you know, somewhere down here. Clara, this is absolutely blasphemy. She does not belong down here at all. <laughs> it doesn't matter which form of Clara you use. It doesn't matter if she's hitting one target, six targets or 20 targets. Clara does not belong in B tier in anybody's tier list. It, it is what it is. Himiko, especially in this MOC, does not belong here. There's a lot of things that you could dissect about this, but this leads into a few other points that I have that I really want to get across because this isn't like a bash pride ones tier list video. I'm not doing that at all. I'm just pointing out the discrepancies on why some of these characters being placed where they are and if the value or rather the main criteria to look at is what is happening in the current form of MOC, then these things need to be adjusted. And if I'm not mistaken, doesn't pride one have the current can we we can see the current MOC, right? Which should be. Yeah, this should be the current MOC. Yeah. So fire, fire, lightning. Uh, there's some ice in here. Yeah. Ice, ice, fire, 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 fire. This one doesn't have fire. So this is just purely imaginary wind, ice, quantum. Lightning is in here. Fire once again, imaginary fire, fire, fire. OK, yeah. No, 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 no. Himiko right here, especially stage nine and ten. Dog, you guys need to put Himiko immediately in S tier. I, I don't care. There's there's quite literally no reason to not have her in S tier. <laughs> this is Himiko. This is redhead biasy. There's no reason to not have her up here. I'll explain that at some other point, maybe later in the video. But right now, you guys see what I'm saying. There's discrepancies in having a tier list based off of MOC, but the tier list just barely changes. Now, I know for a fact, and, and no one has to tell me this, I just understand how the community works. A lot of what people do when they're making tier lists is they pander to the audience. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is if I know that the community loves, uh, I'm not going to use him. If I know the community loves Welt and, and I say that Welt belongs in C tier, he does not. But let's just say that I did. The community will have an uproar. Everyone's who uh, whose favorite character is Welt will no longer agree with anything on the tier list. They will find a reason to hate the tier list entirely because their one favorite character is not in S plus double S minus negative six territory. That's what they want. And it doesn't exist. 
you can't be afraid to place a character where they belong with valid reasons or valid assumptions. And that's, again, something that as a community, we don't have a consensus to do. Everyone is very afraid of saying what they want or how they feel, having valid reasons behind it, and then having a discussion. A lot of discussions don't get to happen because they turn into arguments. And sometimes you just can't have these discussions with certain people, i.e. Reddit. Moving along from there, what I tried to do, I tried to go ahead and I'm still watching through this video. There's a couple different CN videos that I wanna get through. I'm trying to have uh, me and one of my friends, Ken, are kind of like going through stuff, or at least I'm trying to get him to go through some stuff. And then we're gonna like translate things so that I can fully understand what's going on. Cause I, I don't want any like, I don't wanna use any digital translator or anything like that. And then I misinterpret something. So I just went to Ken, Ken's, uh, Ken understands the language and I'm sure he'll be able to help me out with like what I'm looking at. Cause right now, I can only assume what I'm looking at based off the letters and the numbers and you know like some very very uh not fluent translating skills of my own but it is what it is regardless CN has a very different way of going about looking at their tier list some of the criteria are very similar if not the same to what we just saw in pride wins tier list up here in the uh tier list criteria all this stuff at the bottom this is valid there's a lot about this once again that should be taken into account across the entire board not even just for MOC if you remove MOC from things entirely, you end up getting a tier list not like this. This is old. Don't look at this. But I'm just I'm putting everything down here so that you guys can see really quick what I mean by this. You start getting to a point where certain characters value is is too damn high. It's it's significantly higher than the rest of the cast and for good reason. So one of those characters, actually two, these two in particular from damage straight up in S plus territory does not matter in any other single sense of the word. Single target damage, they got it. Blast damage, they got it. AOE, they can make it happen. They uh, don't die as easily because their destruction and they're a little bit bulkier than the other DPS classes in the game. They do more damage. They have two or three classes built into one. They don't steal from the team. And in, in Vibrato Lune's case, yeah, he does steal skill points, so he's a little harder to use. But you build his team correctly, you don't have to worry about that. There are some other sacrifices that come from doing that though, but it is what it is. Point being is that they sit up at the top. Now you get into, okay, well, what about your supports or other type of characters? Okay, cool. Oh wait, she's up there too. I'll explain her in her own different video, but Fushuin, she she ruined the meta. Fushuin absolutely broke the meta. Nobody else in the game matters except this one character because what she does is allow so many other things to happen and she opened another doorway for like more of that to happen. Like more Fushuins are gonna come in the future. And then you guys are gonna be like, oh man, uh, I didn't pull Fushuin, who do I need? All right, well, you need Fushuin, and then you need another Fushuin on another team, and then you need a Branya, and then you need another Branya on another team. It's ridiculous. Branya is also up here, right? Like, you don't need Branya, but she's become too, too static of a character. Every single time you see any one of these best teams, best partner, best whatever, and we think Branya doesn't work, turns out she's the best partner for that character. So Branya goes right up there. Now, we get into a little bit of more discrepancies or more arguments, if you will, on how characters operate. In my opinion, and I'm just, I'm gonna put where they at. There's like four characters that belong here. Um, One, two, three, four. And this, I'm purely going off of like DPS standpoint. Clara goes up here too, but not right now. I'll explain Clara later. Five. There's there's five characters that belong in this tier. Okay, right right here in this realm. Kafka and Topaz are the same freaking character. They belong right wherever you put Kafka, you have to put Topaz. The reason I say that is because what else does a character offer besides damage? What else do they bring to the table? Again, so many things come into play when it comes to tier lists. Kafka and Topaz are two unique characters that can only go up. I've said this in every single video across my channel. I've said this in every conversation that I've had with anybody when we're talking about tier list and characters. These two characters in particular can only go up. What do I mean by that? What I mean is Kafka can't go down. You cannot move her down from the tier list. The moment they put her in S tier, she can't go down. I don't care. The only way she goes down is literally the MOC thing where you're basing your tier list off of MOC and there's just no lightning at all in MOC. Then of course, she's gonna go down because you're not using her. In a sense of the character, what the character brings to the table, Kafka goes up. If they release a some character who is busted for DOTs. I don't know what this character is, wink, wink. But if they release a character that is busted for DOTs, Kafka shoots up. The DOT character then shoots up. If Topaz gets a character that's busted with follow-up attacks, she already has a couple now, but it's taking a little bit more work for people to figure out. If they release that character for Topaz, Topaz goes up, she can't go down. These two characters in particular are unique in their own right. Not only do they offer an absurd amount of damage for themselves because their ceiling is very high, they also offer an absurd amount of damage potential to allow another character or multiple characters to be able to do this thing. In the event, like I mentioned in my previous video, 
Topaz gets a, a sustained character or a supportive character that has follow up attacks and also supports the team, whether that be buffing their damage or uh, putting shields up for them or healing them, giving them energy, anything like that. That character shoots Topaz up by allowing that character to go up. Topaz brings that character up as well. In the same sense, if you have a direct damage dealing character, let's take Himiko. And then Himiko, let's say that she had a direct way to trigger her follow up attack that had nothing to do with weakness break. You could just do it. Then it would force all of those characters to go up. The potential in a character needs to be looked at and evaluated to a point not based off of memory of chaos at this moment in time. The game, the game has been telling us we don't even under I'm going to say it right now. And I know this video is like long. I apologize. We have so, so like uh, limited information. The, the knowledge of the game itself is so limited and I see it all the time in global. Global has such a limited understanding of what the game is trying to do or, or the game's potential as a whole that we overlook and overshadow so many different things. And then when they come out, there's two types of people. Oh, I always knew that. Yeah, I, I knew that. I knew I knew effect hit rate was going to be busted. I, I knew break effect was the best thing in the game, bro. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. No, I, I, I've been like, I, I didn't say it, but I was thinking about break effect the whole time. Like, I was like, man, what what, what if we had like Topaz break effect? Like, what if Fushwin had break effect and then we built a Fushwin with break effect and sustain? I've been thinking about that, um, you know, since the beta. That's one type of player. The other type of player is a person who will stand 10 toes down and tell you, nah, break effect is ass. It's still ass, bro. You don't need it. Uh, effect hit rate, garbage, dog shit, crit rate. You don't need that, bro. Why does your sustain have crit rate? You don't need that, man. They gave Fushwin crit rate for no reason. She doesn't need that, bro. You don't need that. Critting on a sustain? No, bro, you don't need that. DOT, get that out of here. You have characters like that. Those are the two type of people, or not characters, players. Those are the two type of players that you're gonna have, right? They're complete polar opposites of one another, but the game itself is giving you the information to be able to do that. So going back to what I said, going back to what Mr. Poke and I had a discussion about and we had it in the podcast, right? And we said the game has to get to a point. We would love it if it got more difficult, not because we want people to, to not be able to beat the game, right? The game is piss easy right now, but simply because of the fact that you're unleashing and giving us so much power, so much uh, opportunity to deal this significant amount of damage and utility now to get that damage that you're going to get to a point where the characters are too strong for the game. The, the game is just they can sleep and then they beat the game. That's how strong these characters are becoming, especially with what we've seen in the future and what some of you have already kind of like dug and looked for on your own. So you know what I'm I'm thinking or talking about that power coming into the current state of the game with no changes whatsoever. You, you don't need anything. It's getting to a point where you just you don't even have to pull like you get these characters and you're done. Every character in the game right now, you, I could name like eight characters and you don't need anything else in the game. We talk about Blade and we mentioned that that Blade, right? He's a character. He's a very self-sufficient character and he functions in two different roles, main DPS or sub DPS. He doesn't consume a lot of skill points, but he doesn't generate them either, which is fine, right? Because he's still dishing out damage. He also has a follow up attack of his own. He heals himself. He takes his own HP away. I didn't mean to do that, Mike, my bad. He's a very solid character. So having him in anything below S tier is blasphemy. Zila, we've gone over Zila a numerous amount of times. She just busted. Silver Wolf literally breaks the game. She physically breaks the mechanics and laws of the game by cheating and, and hacking a weakness or debuffs or whatever onto another enemy. Single target or not, it doesn't matter. The only way that you can remove Silver Wolf and like just get her out of here is you have every other debuffer in the game, which some of you are coming to the point because you you know you're getting lucky or you're pulling or you're spending money, whatever, where you have every other debuffer in the game fully built and they're they're perfect the way they are. Versus Silver Wolf would have to give have to get replaced by another Silver Wolf that did the same thing but twice as good and AOE. Then you no longer need Silver Wolf and, and now you have phased her out, which it's it's Hoyoverse. I'm sure they'll make a, a AOE version of Silver Wolf with like two times the modifiers. It is what it is. I'm maybe in like 2.5 or 3.0. I don't know. Who knows? Lastly, I kind of want to go over just a, a brief understanding of real world scenario versus the I, uh, the perfect world. Like what happens in the actual game versus the perfect world scenario? What we do as theory crafters, as uh, tier list makers, I guess that still counts as theory crafting, whatever. We look at things in a more ideal scenario. Some of us try to make it in a way where it is a little bit more realistic. So instead of giving you a guide or giving you ideas with like 10, 10, 10, all, all level 10 on your skills, talents, traces, everything, 
we make it eight or we make it seven instead of thinking that like, oh yeah, you can get the perfect crit stat, right? You can perfectly get 100% crit rate and like 200% crit damage. We try and make it somewhat average. So it's like, oh, 50% crit rate or 60% crit rate and then double that for the, the crit damage somewhere around there. There are things like that that we try and do so that it's a little bit more realistic for a lot of players. Obviously, this isn't going to happen for everybody because it's RNG. I can't control what's in your account. You can't control what's in my account. That's why a lot of the times when you guys see me playing the game, my account's like busted his ass. But then my one character like Kafka is fucking OD, right? Because it just got really lucky on that, but not on everybody else. So when you talk about a character, and this is what I mentioned earlier, Clara, you talk about a character like Clara, who on paper is busted. Clara is hands down top top three, top five characters in the game, free, easy, on paper. But since you can't force the enemy to hit you, you can only highly increase that chance. It disrupts what she would essentially be, uh, like how she would consistently be top five, you know what I mean? So when you can't control certain factors because the game doesn't want you to, but the game allows you to influence those factors, those things need to be taken into consideration. Now, because Claire is a destruction unit, you have a character like Lynx who increases that even further, and then you could also reduce who gets hit by adding hunt characters or uh, what's the other one? I think it's harm. No, not harmony. Abundance. I think hunt and abundance have the lowest the lowest trigger for being hit the aggro. But I could be wrong on that. If they have the lowest aggro, then yeah, you would add hunt characters, aggro and then destruction, so on and so forth. It's just proper team building. You would do your team building in a way so that this happens. Boom, 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 bada bing, bop, bop. And then Clara gets hit. Killer constantly gets hit, she constantly gets energy, she fires off counters, she's super strong, they all crit, and then the enemy goes down. Before the turn goes away, they're all dead. Why? Because that's just how Clara functions. In an ideal, perfect scenario, Clara obliterates the team before she even gets to make her move, or she makes her move first, and then she hangs back until the very end of the turn, whatever. Point being is that all of this stuff happens in the ideal, perfect scenario, but because of the game, you can't always control that. Separating that, when you're talking about tiers, when you're talking about characters and their value, there has to be some fine line or some separation between this is the ideal perfect world, this is what actually happens. And a lot of the time when we're looking at Imbiber to Lune, and like, oh yeah, Imbiber to Lune just blows shit up. Why do I keep hitting stuff? Imbiber to Lune just blows shit up. Yes, you're 100% right. How do you trigger this? Like how, how frequent can you get this? Oh, well you do one, two, three. Okay, you do one, two, three, and then that's what it is. Jing you in. Oh, Jing Yuen's the best character in the game and blah, 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 blah. All he needs is seven different fucking things. Okay, how easy is it to acquire these seven different things? Can he function on his own without any of these seven things? Oh, well, I mean, uh, maybe not seven, but he could function with like three of them, you know? So like he still requires something that goes back into the, uh, what it probably would have? Reliance on specific teammates to perform well. He is glued to a certain team comp or to having certain characters. Whereas when you're trying to put him in something else, in the case of like a sub DPS role, it doesn't really function that way. Or you have to go out of your way so much that he has so much speed with energy regen rope and a bunch of other stuff that he's going to be able to get his ultimate consistently go two times per turn. And then he always gets lightning lord. And then that's something that like not everybody can do because it's not as easy because it's out of your control. There are a lot of things that are outside of your control that need to be taken into consideration. And so you have to separate it from the conversation or include it in the conversation. And that needs to be made known. Tier list as a whole, especially when it comes to gacha games, are, are really weird because you can like perfectly categorize a character and we could all go through this like together. You know what I mean? Jing Liu's at the top and Biber Lune's at the top. Braun is at the top. Fu Xuan's at the top. Loach is right beneath that. We could categorize everything. But the moment you start talking about, yeah, but uh, if Zila doesn't get resurgence, she's dead. So it doesn't matter because she can't kill everything. If she does get it, you're dead. How does that matter? You know what I'm saying? Like you, you can't, you can't do that. You, we just, it's, it's weird. It's weird. I don't know, but, but this video is way long. I didn't mean for this to be that long. I just, I haven't spoken to you guys in what feels like a week. I really just wanted to ramble and talk about everything. Two things before I get out of here. One, if anyone knows how to operate Google Sheets or Excel, like build them, I would love for somebody to hit me up. I really do want to find a way to like establish my own tier list. It, it, it doesn't even matter like how it's in there. I just really despise tier maker. I don't like the way that their website is. I don't like the tier list function that they have because it's limited. It's not enough for me. I need more options, I need more descriptions, things like that. So if anyone has the ability to do that, please hit me up. I would love to work with you on something like that and get that done. And then number two, over the course of the next few days, you will see some different videos from me. They'll still be the same videos, don't be wrong, but we are going to be trying to expand this previous October. So like last month, 
was a banger month for us. I don't know where that came from. I appreciate that. I would love to keep it going. So I'm going to do my part and keep the topics and videos going. When you guys have things you want me to discuss or whatever, feel free to let me know. Leave a comment at me. Uh, add me on Twitter, come in the discord, add me in the discord, tell me the things I have a suggestion to have in my discord, whatever. Just if there's something you want me to talk about, you want my opinion on shoot it my way. If it's something that I can answer really quick, I might make it into a short. We're going to experiment with those. I don't really know. And I guess that might be the third thing that I want to do before I end off. If any of you are like shorts editors or want to frick around and find out when it comes to like making shorts and doing all that stuff, whatever it is that I do, my edits and whatnot, I really just need somebody to help me out with shorts. I'm really just trying to organize things. I'm horrible at time management, but it is what it is. Anyway, bye. Because I can't say my usual outro because it's inappropriate for YouTube. Like the video, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Smell you later.